In today's video, I'm going to try to survive 100 days in outer space. I have three objectives. First, obtain full tier 4 spacesuit armor. Second, eliminate Wendigo, the ruler of undead. My last objective, eliminate Ignitus, the king of the galaxy. Can I survive? Stay tuned to find out. Hello, Professor Painful. You've been summoned here today to foresee your obligations to set up a space station on Mars and proceed our search for existing life. Astronaut Lewis has a base on the other side of Mars and you'll be tasked to meet up with him later. You will be provided a specialized space suit to assist you on your mission. You'll be dispatched out tomorrow morning. Break a leg, Professor Painful. Just like that, we prepared to go. As you can see, he established us with some beginner items that we're going to need on the moon and he also got us a space suit. This space suit looks pretty awesome. Time to meet up with Forrest. After retrieving our items from Headmaster Master Gerald, we headed over to the rockets. Have a safe flight and we'll reconnect soon, Forrest. Best of luck on your travels to Mars. Stay safe. So my mission began. Hopefully I arrive in space safely. I traveled for the next three days, leaving the Earth's atmosphere, arriving on day four. After exiting the aircraft, I jumped around with zero gravity. That's pretty awesome. No time to waste though. The first thing we did was run around looking for a position to build our base. We found a spot nearby that looked pretty nice, so we started building and suddenly we get attacked by a monster that goes by the name of Dijin. Luckily, these things don't have much health, but dang, they hit you with a tornado and it sends you flying. So we continued mining and suddenly a Geonash spawned on top of me. The Geonash special ability is as soon as it hits you, it prevents you from jumping. Luckily, I had my pickaxe and mine straight out. They chased me for quite a while, and when I turned around, it looked like they were taking some damage. It doesn't look like they can breathe in space. So when I looked around, one of them had died, which meant the other one had to be low. So I gave it a smack, and it died. Oof, that was a close one. We then traveled back to our space station and continued building it. We blocked ourselves fully in to prevent any more mobs from attacking us. We spent the next few days traveling around Mars in hopes to find something, and in the distance, we saw something. There was also a little white creature. I'm not too sure what it was, but it was just there. Hopefully that creature isn't like a lookout or spy for something. That would be bad. Anyways, we proceeded to enter into the cavern. It didn't look occupied, so I walked in. There was a sign on the wall, and it was not English. In the first chest, we found some glass, cobblestone, cobwebs. And in the second chest, we found basically the same things, except we did find a stone sword. We proceeded to mine out the entire base and take all the materials back to our base. As you all can see, I finished the bottom of my space station and I even made a second floor of the space station. I ended up turning this into a brewing area, that way I have a place to brew potions. After that, I headed back downstairs and created an airlock entrance and exit. Now none of my oxygen can escape my house. I was exploring for more sides of life and suddenly... Help me! Dispatch to Lewis, do you read me? Over. No response. Okay, let's go check out his space station. I traveled a couple of days to get to Lewis's space station. As we walked towards the ledge, we saw Lewis's space station. Lewis, do you read? Over. He wasn't responding, so we made our way down here. This definitely was Lewis's base, so we headed in through the air tunnel and noticed most of his base was griefed. A lot of the glass around was griefed and even the roofs in some of his farms. I checked his chest to see if there was anything left in there, I ended up finding some food, and I managed to harvest the rest of his farm because it would have died without him maintaining it. We spent the next four days traveling around Mars in attempts to find Lewis, and suddenly a spaceship appears in the sky and it flies away as soon as we get close. I wondered where this spacecraft was going and who was operating it. I ended up following that flying aircraft and it ended up leading me to this giant spaceship so we built up. Once boarding the aircraft, we looked around and there was a lot of hostile skeletons around here. There was even a skeleton flying up the wall. How is that even possible? Anyways, let's get out of here. There's too many. Once making it to the back of the aircraft, I found a door which led into a big room. Once making it to the top of the aircraft, I turned a corner and there was a cyber demon. We immediately started attacking it and it had some sort of gun and every time it shot me, it would shoot me back. We ate our food to regenerate our health and we went in for some more hits. It's really hard to hit this thing because it keeps knocking me back. After pushing and pushing and constantly getting knocked back, we have finally eliminated the cyber demon. We ran on top of the spaceship and we saw a sign and on the sign it said dash L. It had to be from Lewis. 
After a couple days of running, we returned back to our space station. We spent the next couple days outside creating farms, and we got jumped by another degen. It ended up hitting us with a tornado, launching us really high into the sky. And I looked up, and there was a few more degens, and they kept hitting me with tornadoes, launching me higher and higher. As soon as we started falling, I blocked my shield, and we landed, and we actually didn't take much damage. So, we continued building our farm, and when I broke a block, a Geonash spawned right on top of me. I got really scared, I blocked myself in the corner, and my out the back. I just got away on one HP. If I would have died there, the entire server would have deleted. As you guys can see, we finished the farm, we have some potatoes, and we have some wheat. After created our farms, it was time to head back to Earth. We spent the next three days traveling from Mars, returning back to Earth. We arrived at the NASA headquarters to meet up with Jarrell. Welcome back, Professor Painful. Congratulations. You've completed your first task. NASA picked up a heat signature on the northeast side of Mars. You'll be provided with upgraded stationary equipment for this code red. You'll be dispatched to Mars again in two days to investigate. Use this time to gather any essential supplies you'll need. Be cautious, Professor. After equipping our new armor from Gerald, he provided us with a diamond sword and pickaxe. Hey, Forrest, glad to see you're still alive. I see you got an upgraded suit as well. We better get to our missions. Yes, sir. Good luck. You as well. Stay safe. For the next three days, we departed back to Mars. On day 37, we landed. Arriving back at our space station on day 38, we created an additional room to our base and created an airlock entrance and exit to get in and out of the back of our base. For the next few days, I explored around Mars in hopes to find something, and in the distance, I saw a massive white figure. As I got closer, it looked like some sort of massive mega mansion. I wonder who could possibly live here. Upon entering, it didn't look like anyone was down in the basement, and in the corner, there was a sign. The sign said Northern Hemisphere dash L. Dispatch to Headmaster Gerald. Keep an eye on the Northern Hemisphere. Over. After looting one of the brewing stands, there was a few more with a lot of instant health and speed potions, so we took the brewing stands. We continued up the stairs, and we saw a massive creature with two clubs. We charged directly at it. As we kept attacking this Etten boss, every time it hit me, I would reduce a lot of hunger. It seems like it has some sort of negative effect on my hunger bars. Before I even realized, I was down five hearts and had to drink an instant health. I then started eating baked potatoes to regen, and he broke all the glass next to me. We continued this fight outside, and with one more hit, to the Etten boss was taken down. He had instant health and golden apples. We explored around for the next couple of days, and we stumbled into a massive hole in the ground, and at the bottom, there looked to be a cave. As we got closer, it most definitely was a cave, and I am not sure what's at the bottom of it. Anyways, we proceed to go in, and it gets a little bit dark. As we turn the corner, we get jumped by a creature that goes by the name of Spectre. I didn't realize how much damage it did. I quickly gathered my health pots to splash him down, just barely surviving, eliminating the Spectre. After that fight, I was a little nervous to go down, so I preemptively popped a golden apple and a speed potion, and yep, there's more mobs down here. There was two monsters that go by the name of Crew that whenever they attack you, everything goes pitch black. We slowly kept backing up out of the cave, eating a golden apple, managing to kill both of the crews. We proceeded to the bottom of the cave to find a chest with diamonds in it, and we heard a noise. The lost someone let me out! I walked towards it, and it was Astronaut Lewis! We have finally found him! I immediately mined him out of that hole, and we got out of this creepy little dungeon. We made it home two days later. Headmaster Gerald, look who I found. Thank God, you found Lewis. Return to Earth immediately. So, that's exactly what we did. We traveled over to our rockets and dispatched into space, arriving on Earth three days later. One last thing before you head back to Mars. There seems to be some disturbance complaints on the south sector of the continent. Please go take a look. Just before we attend that disturbance call, we figured it'd be a good idea to enchant. We went ahead and threw sharpness one on our sword. Six days of traveling later, we had made it to the south sector of the continent. Once arriving, we found this massive mansion that shouldn't have even been here. When did this get built and who even lives here? We went up the ladder, bringing us to the second story and we found like a computer library and across the hallway, there were seemed to be another one. We took the ladder to the third story, and when we turned around, we were getting charged at by the Wendigo boss. I see what the headmaster was saying of there being some sort of disturbance. This definitely seems to be one. As you can see, he does a lot of damage, bringing me down to half HP. I had to chug some golden apples to be able to survive. As we eat another golden apple, he throws another fireball at me, which brought me to 5 HP. The Wendigo was nearly dead. I blocked the final fireball, eliminating the Wendigo. We proceeded to search this computer room, killing a skeleton, and there was a chest with some diamond blocks and golden apples in it. A couple days later, we made it back to the HQ. I can't thank you enough for saving our nation from that Wendigo creature. Without your commitment to this team, the world would have been in trouble. 
Well, I guess it's about that time to head back to Mars. Whoa, it looks like the NASA team upgraded our rocket ships. Holy, they look incredible. Let's get to work. And just like that, we were off in our brand new rockets. On day 69, I arrived back at my base and I saw a spaceship. It dropped something from the ship and blew up my entire space station. I walked over to take a look at all the damage and I got jumped by a tremor monster. Every time it attacks me, it explodes and it actually does quite a bit of damage so we had to throw a health pot there. Anyways, we took that down. Wow, it looks like we're gonna have to build a new space station. After a few days of searching, we found a mountain and it seemed to be hollow. Once we got closer, it was. It was a completely hollow place. A perfect place to build our base, which took us two days. While exploring more of Mars for the next few days, we saw another structure. As I got closer, it looked like it was some sort of massive satellite. We ended up enderpearling landing on the wing. We ran directly to the center of the structure and heard a noise. I immediately dug down and saw there was some sort of boss in there, so I jumped in. What I didn't realize is that there was actually two of them, and they were called Jabberwocks, and they do a lot of damage. We ran into the other room throwing our health pots, and we came back out, eliminating one of the Jabberwocks. The other one gets me very low, so I pop into their golden apple and instant health potions to run over and finish them off. After searching around this spaceship, we found a chest with a sharpness 3 diamond sword, some golden apples, and insta health. Painful, return to Earth for armor upgrades and info on a new planet. So, I made it back to the space station, deposited the rest of my loot, and flew to Earth. As we parachuted down to Earth, we had made it to the NASA headquarters. Headmaster Daryl pulled up a satellite, zoomed into Saturn, and it launched onto a planet named Titan. That's where we need to go. Is it just me, or did NASA give these rockets an upgrade? Yeah, man, NASA's really hooking us up. Anyways, good luck on your journey, man. And just like that, I was deploying out to the Titan planet. As I was exploring around, I ran into some very weird creature. What even is that? Comment down below. Anyways, we kept running and saw a massive spaceship. There was only one way I was getting onto this spaceship. I popped my golden apple, ran past a lot of mobs, and hell married an ender pearl. We popped golden apples and drank speed potions. With no fear, we ran right in, getting hit by a lot of his flame breath. We tried dodging as much of it as we can by circling around. We backed up and blocked our shield, blocking some of the flames, but some of it broke through and did light me on fire again. We charged right in on the Ignebus, getting a few more hits on it and dodging as much fire as we possibly can. It got us quite low, so we had to use an insta health and a golden apple. After popping another golden apple, we strafed to the right, dodging a lot of of his flame breath and a quick strafe to the left allowed us to get a lot of damage eliminating the Ignebus. And just like that, I departed from the Titan planet. It was nice while it lasted. We made it back to our semi-built space station to deposit the rest of the loot. This is going to be the last time we're here for a while. It was awesome being here. Lieutenant Advisor Forrest and Professor Painful were dispatched to eliminate a threat to our society here on Earth. They have finally returned from that mission. From this point on, they shall be classified as heroes to our nation, which is why I've decided to award both Painful and Forrest the Medal of Bravery. Congratulations, gentlemen. If you made it this far in the video, make sure you go watch Forest POV. Both of our POVs are completely different. We had different bosses and different objectives. So make sure you go to his channel, go show him some love, and thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you guys later.